joining by defending race winner Kyle Busch, driver of the number 18 M&M's Toyota Camry for Joe Gibbs Racing. Kyle, this is one of the tracks that frustrated you for so long, but you were able to sweep the weekend last year, get that monkey off of your back. How confident are you in that uh, M&M's Camry going into this weekend? Well, so far so good. We've got uh, some speed in our race car, but you know we certainly want to work on some of our issues that we've got right now with uh, our balance and uh, try to make that as good as we can. Obviously, for qualifying here today, if that happens, and then um, you know for tomorrow, we got a couple more practices to try to work on it for the race. So, just making sure you've got a good driving car here for the for the short run and the long run. It's going to be important because this race uh, can go by pretty quickly and um, you know can change a lot in a hurry without you being ready for it and can take you out of the game. So you want to make sure that you're on top of it all day long. Okay, we're going to open up the floor for questions. We're going to start with Claire, then we'll go to Jared, and we'll go to the gentleman the Orioles had. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Kyle, ups and downs of the last couple of weeks and trying to kind of get into a rhythm headed into the rest of the season. How do you kind of look at where you're at, where your team is at, and where the patience level is at heading into a race like this? Yeah, we've, we've had a lot of ups and downs. We've... Um, also, I don't feel like finished at all how um, we could have or should have finished in any of the races so far this year. I don't think we've over exceeded expectations yet at all. Um, you know, we, we had issues at Daytona. We had issues at, uh, at Atlanta. Actually, Atlanta, we probably should have finished worse than where we did. So I take that back. But, um, you know, we ran pretty poorly there overall all day. And then uh, the other races that we've had, we, we deserved a top four finish at Vegas, probably a win at Phoenix, and a top three finish at Atlanta or uh, California, and just weren't able to capitalize on those, weren't able to close in the late stages of the event. So, um, you know, we feel a little bit behind the eight ball with where we're at. Uh, we'd like to be better. We'd like to have that win. And, um, you know, but we just, we don't. So we just got to keep fighting and keep trying to do what we can with our M&M's Camrys each week and making sure that uh, we, we turn those fortunes. And where do you think your patience level is at to kind of get into the rhythm for the season after all that's transpired? Zero. Every week it's zero. <laughs> Till I win, then it'll be ten. Go next to Jared. <clears throat> hey, Jared, trying to edge that marketing. Uh, uh, one question and a quick follow-up. Kyle, um, obviously looking ahead uh, to Sonoma, that's a track where you've got a couple of wins and have had great success, but I'm curious to get your take on how you think uh, stages will affect the racing there at the road course uh, with that track's history of already being you know so crazy especially in recent years um, I haven't even thought about next week so Sonoma's a long ways away um, quick answer to that would be uh, yeah um, there's gonna be segments there depending on what laps they're at I don't even know that but um, you know if there's a caution before it five laps before it eight laps before it, there may be guys that come and pit because they know there's going to be a, a guaranteed caution that comes out a few laps later and others are going to stay out so you know it's going to flip flop the field a few times that's for sure so there's going to be some added weirdness to those races um, you know and depending on how the strategy plays out for the second segment will then kind of play out for what's going to happen through the rest of the race and for the end of the race. So, you know, there, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of different strategies that are going to happen through that race, uh, I'm sure. And uh, same to be said for Watkins Glen as well. And just to follow up, Kyle, what do you feel like um, is the biggest key or the biggest keys to performing well in the longer races, the 600 miler and obviously the 500 mile races? Um, I, I think just being able to get comfortable, um, get settled, and, and make sure that you're, you're good to go for those long hauls. Don't worry about what lap it is ever during a race. That, that's the worst thing that could happen to you. I remember we were at Atlanta one time, and, and I had to use the restroom, and it was probably lap 45, and it was 325 long. And so it hurt really bad by the end of the 325. So, um, you know, you just try not to ever worry about what lap you're on or what's going on. Uh, around you, you just keep battling it out, keep driving, keep your focus forward on what you're doing, and um, you know that that's the best way to go about those long, long races. Hey, Kyle, Andy Marquet, Race22.com. You're one of the biggest advocates for short track racing and NASCAR racing. You field cars and super late models. So earlier, Kyle Larson was asked about short track racing and saying he he'd like to see more participation from NASCAR drivers. And that w first, what are your thoughts on that? And second. There, the, there's a big late model race here in September, this being one of the great short tracks. Have you thought about running that in the future? And also being the short track guy that you are, what was it like to get that win last year? 
Yeah, I mean, um, I enjoyed the, the local short track scene. I love racing uh, in those cars. I, I follow it as much as I can on, on speed51.com. Bob and his guys do a great job of following and covering the entire United States, whether it's late model stock, super lates, which are my favorite personally, uh, modifieds, dirt, pavement, all kinds of stuff, you know. So, um, you know, as far as NASCAR stars going back to their roots and, and doing some of that stuff, I think it's – it's not necessary. You know, if you love it, go do it. Try to be safe. But uh, I think there's there's a lot of risk, and that's why a lot of the guys don't do it. Obviously, if you get hurt doing that and you lose your ride for a few weeks here and don't ever have an opportunity to come back because somebody better than you takes over in it, then, you know, you're, you're out, you know. So um, you, you got to weigh those those consequences uh, a lot. And uh, for me, I I do that sometimes. Um, you know, I've wanted to run a modified uh, one of the the, the Wayland Wayland Whelan modifieds at at Loudon, and years ago J D Gibbs told me no, um, exactly that same reason like weigh your options and, and what you got going on for you. We don't need you to get hurt, and so um, I just I was never able to go do those things. So um, as it comes down to it, when I get older and and maybe get out of cup racing, then uh, I might look at going to doing some more of that stuff and and touring around. But um, hopefully the all the short tracks are still in existence by then, too, because it's probably 15 years from now. So, Okay, we're going to come up front and work this front row here. We'll start with Bob and then go to Dustin, Jeff, and Mike. Bob Pockers, ESPN. Uh, do you all lose anything without having Dave Rogers in your debriefs? I believe so. You know, I, I think any time you lose good crew chiefs, you lose a little bit of strength to your company. I think whenever you lose good drivers like Carl Edwards, you lose a little bit of strength to your company. So we've taken two big bullets, um, you know, here for this season. Uh, one from Carl, one from Dave, and um, you know it, we, we've got to we've got to recome some of that and, um, and and get back into the game where we're a f the strongest four car team out there, like we felt like we were the last couple of years with with all of us in place. So um, you know, with with Daniel, he's still going to be learning. We know that's sort of a, a long term um, deal that that he's got to grow and get better and, and be ready as a driver more down the road, and then uh, with. The crew chief aspect of it with Dave, we're not sure how long he'll step down, but um, you know if it's indefinitely, which is could be forever, then uh, hopefully Scott Graves will fill that void. But he's so new, so fresh right now that that um, you know he's going to take a few weeks, at least a month or so, to get up to speed for sure um, before we can really get to see the full potential out of uh, out of out of Scott. Okay, we'll go next to Dustin, then to Jeff, then to Mike. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Uh, Kyle, in, in all-star events, in other sports, there's often the, the skills competition where the athletes can showcase their skills. But yet in racing, is there is there a way or can there be a way for you guys to have your talent showcased even more so other than just in a race, per se, or, or changing everything up or changing things? How do you How do you get the true sense of a driver's skill where it's like, NBA, you see the three-point shooting contest, the dunk contest, Major League Baseball, the home run derbies and things like that. How can you incorporate things like that mm -hmm. into into this sport to showcase more your talents? I got a hell of an idea. Let's run one lap on the mile and a half at Charlotte. Then we'll run the next lap on the quarter mile of Charlotte. Then we'll run the next lap on the roll at Charlotte. So then you get a short track, a road course, and a mile and a half all in one speedway. There you go. We, we can do that. That sounds like fun. Uh, I thought of it first. So um, I, I don't know. I mean, besides doing something stupid like that, I, I really don't know how you can put us. You definitely don't want to see us playing basketball. I've Googled Brad Keselowski. That's bad. Um, so Denny would be a heck of a lot better at that than some of the others of us probably. But um, I, I don't know how you, how you do that. I think the, the best thing that we got going for us that I really, really enjoy about uh, All-Star Weekend is the fact that the, the qualifying procedure is the way that it is and we can get the pit crews involved. I think that's probably the most fun. You know, they lost their um, their star power a few years ago when we lost the, the sprint pit crew challenge down in Charlotte, you know. So um, at least this still gives them something that, that we really want to see them be able to showcase and them to have fun uh, with during the week. And so that that's the most fun for us anyways as drivers that, for me, uh, I like to be and have my team be a part of that with me during that qualifying segment. We'll go to Jeff, then to Mike, then to Robbie. Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com. How many? You should just say jeffgluck.com. <laughs> that would just be like badass. <laughs> just straight up. Just straight up. Jeffgluck.com. Got it. Go. How many Everything is Great shirts have you sold? Um, everything is great. Always has been. Forever will be. Um, 
sales are up over 30 grand so far so in just what two weeks so a lot of great fan support from that it's been awesome um, really a neat deal for the fans to be as supportive of it whether it's you agree with it or don't agree with it it doesn't matter it's just for a great cause so we appreciate that and for what Samantha and I believe in with our charity aspects and the things that we do with the Cobbush Foundation it's uh, uh, are going to go to a lot of um, good use and so from Samantha if I got asked this question she asked me to say thank you to all the fans out there for their uh, willingness to donate and support our cause. Next to Mike. Mike Kimber, USA Today. Um, it, should it be alarming or surprising that the two of the better teams Gibbs and Hendrick haven't won yet this year? Um, I don't think it should be alarming. I think it's probably a good thing to be honest with you. You know there needs to be more parity in our sport. There needs to be other teams that uh, have the opportunity to get up there and, and run well and win races and you see RCR has done that you see Ganassi has done that um, those would be two teams that probably haven't won in the last couple of years I know Larson I guess won a race last year but not regularly let's say like the the JGR bunch or the HMS bunch so um, you know our time's coming we, we know that uh, we'll turn our program around we'll get it up to speed to where we need to I think we're playing a little bit of catch up right now to be honest with you but um, we do have great partners with uh, the guys at um, uh, Furniture Row that have been running really good. They've been strong and up front each week, so they've been helping us as well and, and getting our, our program to, to where we believe we know it can be. They've shown us they've had the potential each week, so we just got to get there with ourselves. Oh no, we're, we're they're they're cranking them each day the the shirts. So they they keep we keep having to recall and uh, and get them to make more each time. Um, I think I don't even know how many batches they've made. I think they just ordered another 400 of them or something like that. So it's pretty good. Thank if you're you. under a delay of getting your shirt, please be patient. <laughs> we're getting them. Trust me. <laughs> go next to Robbie. Robbie Mays, MRN. Kyle, uh, next week you go to Texas. You won there last year. They've changed the uh, surface, repaved and reconfigured. Uh, the corners. Uh, what do you know about the track? What are your thoughts heading to uh, to basically any track next week? Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a whole new repave. So to me, those are the absolute worst racetracks we can ever go to. Um, I hate repaves, but it's a part of our schedule. It's a part of our sport. And five years from now, six years from now, it's going to be great. I'm I'm looking forward to that aspect of it. You know, but um, right out of the gate, going there and trying to put rubber down, and it's slick, man. It's so treacherous and just hard to get a hold of and hard to understand what you're feeling with your car because you can think you're tight and you got all the grip in the world and you're going around the corner and then boom it just busts loose from out from under you with no warning you know those are the the worst things and, and as Joey was talking about earlier that's why the older racetracks the more aged racetracks the Atlantas the Californias you're sliding the whole time so you're already against the slide you don't have maximum grip so you're already playing with it and trying to get the most out of yourself and the car that you possibly can and you're not just locked down locked in solid and then it just jumps out from under you you know so um, I, I don't necessarily look forward to repaves but um, we got one coming up so got to do what we know there's really no homework to do you can't even watch last year's races you can't look at anything besides the the, the Boucher um, YouTube video and just see what the place looks like so you don't go in there blind that's about it okay we're gonna go to your right to Chris Knight Chris Knight catchfence.com Kyle you said in Atlanta that uh, while you felt like that Noel Grankson had the talent and the capabilities to get the job done he needed to calm down a little bit just wondering if you had that conversation for him it's been very quick so far this weekend at Martinsville uh, yeah, we, we had a good talk and, um, you know, it, I, you, you just, it's a young guy. It's, it's, I've heard this from myself years, years ago. It's a lot easier to pull a rope than it is to push one. So, um, you know, we just got to pull on him just a little bit and kind of bring him back. Um, that's pretty easy to do for, for these younger guys. We just need him to, to go out there and get finishes right now. You know, I told him, I'm like, whether it's seventh or 14th or wherever the hell it is, just finish. Don't make any mistakes or minimize your mistakes if you make some. And, um, and and be able to go out there and get a finish, you know. So that's the biggest thing right now is just trying to get him back focused to where he can finish. Because once you're finishing, then you can go after finishing better. Then you can go after finishing better yet. Then you can go after getting those wins. So you know it, it's no different than Larson. You want you finish second four or five weeks in a row, you're you're gonna score a victory. You know, there's there's no ifs ands or buts about it. So um, you know it was good to see Larson get that last week. But um, Noah, it's under the same thing with him. You know, first you must finish to finish first. Kyle, thanks for taking the time to join us today, and uh, good luck this weekend. All right, uh, back to those T-shirts. In case sure. anybody missed it, there's a little subliminal messaging. Did you anybody find it? What's on the front of the shirt? Anybody see it? 
Okay, good. All right, you guys got it. People have asked, they're like, why'd you put a dollar sign on the front of it? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's an 18. It's not a, so. Yeah. And they they sell for how much? Twenty two dollars. Okay. There you go. <laughs> We are now joined by Daniel Suarez, driver of the number 19 Aris Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. Daniel, it's been a, an eventful week in the in the Joe Gibbs Racing shop. So if you can walk us through that process and where you stand heading into Martinsville. Well, uh, so far it's been a, it's been a difficult day. Uh, we had some issues in the first practice. Uh, something that is pretty... Uh, usual here and uh, the wheel hop thing getting into the corner i feel like i don't know for some reason we had some kind of issues with the brakes uh actually in the first run that everything went okay i didn't wreck or anything uh, i called that something was weird with the brakes uh, and then after that we went to q trim and i mean and we wrecked in the first lap pretty much so um not very happy about that but that's that's part of racing we we moved to we moved to a backup car and and, and start from there Okay, we'll open the floor for questions. We'll start here with Jim Utter and work our way around. We'll go to Claire. Jim Utter, motorsport.com. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the difficulties in losing Dave this week? Uh, you see guys seem to be just getting your rhythm together this season. And uh, is it helpful that you and Scott have worked it together already? Well, it was a... Uh, uh, it was a surprise for me as well, but uh, you know I respect a lot and Dave's decision to to do this and and to to try to um, you know to take care of uh, his his personal stuff and uh, and you know with with the, with the cup schedule as busy as it is sometimes it's difficult to do both things at the same time. But uh, I I have a lot of respect for Dave. He's a great guy, a great crew chief. I know uh, I know how hard he, he wants to be at the racetrack. Uh, it's pretty much what he was, what he been working hard his entire life. And uh, and I just you know the only the only thing I can do is wish him the best and and I hope that he 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 come back soon. Okay, we're to go to Claire and then to Bob. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. You know, when something like this happens and no one can say why, then lots of stories and things start about what is it. You and he got along really well. He's a very loyal guy. What can you say about what you know about Dave and how you guys were working together? And then um, is there any hope that he will come back, or do you absolutely not know if it'll be season long? Well, the truth is, is that I don't really know. Um, I wish I know, but uh, I don't really know myself. Uh, what I can tell you is that Dave is an amazing person. Uh, outside of the race, right, he's an amazing person. Uh, even before even before I, I, I started racing with him in Daytona, I went to his house with, with the entire team. We had dinner. I mean, he's a great, great person, and, and we become friends. I mean, we've been together just five races, and we are right now very tight friends. So, um, you know, I, I really respect his decision. Uh, I can tell you that he wished he was here and, uh, and I wish him the best, uh, whatever, whatever decision he, he's making. And, uh, and I just hope that he, he come back soon to do, to, to do whatever he loves to do. That is, you know, being in the races and, and being in the racetrack every weekend, just like myself. Did you see it coming at all? No, at all. I mean, I, I pretty much, hey. I uh, I got to know this almost the same day in that you guys. So um, it, it was something that uh, took me as a surprise, and actually it, it took him as a surprise as well. I mean, it's, it's it was it was a hard week for for the whole organization, uh, but uh, luckily Yogi Racing, uh, you know, is, is is a family. Everyone support each other very well. He's still he's still part of the of the team even when he's not here with us right now. He's still um, you know in communication with uh, all of us and luckily we got Scott uh, which is Scott he's a great crew chief we won a championship together uh, we've been working just one year and, and we we know each other very well so luckily he was able to to step in into the in, into the cup uh, deal okay we're gonna go to Bob then to Hank uh, Bob Parker CSPN did you have any input in Scott uh, being your crew chief and because you don't know really kind of what Dave's status is, do you have to approach it as if Scott is going to be the crew chief for, you know, for the rest of the year? I mean, I, I, I don't really know what is going to happen. Uh, I guess I guess we're, we're going to move uh, as we go. 
uh, I had some input input as for, uh, for sure to, to put the Scott in, in, in the in the in, in the in the seat uh, because Scott I know Scott I know I know what he can do I know what we done together so it, it was it was important to put somebody there that that I that I knew already and uh, I really Scott is, is is the person and um, you know I, I don't really know what is what is going to be the plan for the future uh, I'm guessing that maybe maybe Scott Scott is going to stay there for the whole year but uh, but uh, I don't really know I guess I guess we are going to move as we go okay does I guess most people would say you're kind of off to a pretty decent start with a couple of top tens and, and whatever. Does coming here and having the kind of day you've had today kind of make you realize how much how much there is a, of a hill to climb just to kind of get the feel of all of this? No, I mean, today, Martinsville is, is, is a difficult race track and, and everything can happen here. I, I've seen drivers coming from the back twice and winning the race. so. You know, it's one of those places that uh, that you just need to be patient. And now with the backup, I guess I guess we are going to be for sure better uh, adjusting those brakes. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully we can we can move to the right direction uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, seems like the weather is kind of difficult right now, so that maybe helps my team to to gain some time and, and prepare the backup 100% and and move from there. Any additional questions for Daniel? Go to Bob. How much do you feel this change has set you back? I don't really know. I mean, I felt like for sure I was getting to a point w with Dave where we were, you know, kind of slowly making that chemistry and communication, making those clicks. Uh, and obviously it's, it's, it's never good when you're in that spot of, you know, knowing each other and, and then and then we have to split. Uh, but uh, I mean, the good thing is that Scott, I, I know Scott very well, and he knows me very well. And actually, I was, I was, I was expecting to race with him more than 14, 15 times in the Xfinity stuff this year. So uh, we know very well. Uh, he knows what I what I need to be fast. Uh, he knows my weak points as well. Uh, so I, I think I think having a Scott, uh, you know, jumping into the Cup uh, program, I think is is important. And I hope we we don't have to get back. Any, you know, I hope we, we we stay the same or even forward and, and try to try to move from from there. Luckily, we got a, a great group of guys that they are supporting Scott and myself in everything we need to try to 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 move forward because uh, we don't have any time to lose right now racing every weekend. Any additional questions for Daniel? Daniel, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Buenas suerte. Gracias.